happened to the audio, Nate? Can I listen to that again? That's a problem. The whole intro just sounds like fuzz. So we have no idea what Dave is saying. Let me listen to it again. That's actually the worst. Yeah. So how are the viewers gonna know what Dave's saying? We could ask the other guys to see if they can translate for us. So we're just gonna have them guess what Dave is saying over the corrupted audio. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's talking that the uh, it simply got stuck in the mud and the mud was like pudding. So I think what I think what he's trying to say is he's like, oh, Hence is the greatest employee ever. Oh, he's number one. Oh, what I would do without him. Well, it looks like what he's trying to say here is when the Husker do got stuck in the mud, usually you just get in there and pull her full throttle, slam the front down, you'd be able to pick up those other Husker do's off the ground, and drive it on out of safety. But because we can't get it started, we're gonna have to use Diesel Dave's muscle. Well, right there, it sounds like he's saying, you know what? My feet are frozen. I just wanna go back home. I can tell you exactly what he's saying. He's saying, buckle up. This is the best recovery we've ever done in our life. This is the most amazing day I've ever experienced in my life. So buckle up and then buckle up again and then make sure you put on your third buckle. Or he's like, I know, we could leave and act like we never even showed up. They would never know it. We'll Someone just find me a D-ring. I need a D-ring pronto hey man, ASAP. Somebody find me a taco truck. With right what do we do here? Well, I'm, I'm going to ask Lance. Hey, Lance is the greatest, greatest kind of guy. Or he's like, hey, the operator of the or world. Man, like, I'm going to take a phone like, call and walk over there. Or he's like, I just want to go back home to that cauldron hot tub that we built. That's... Oh. Hello. I don't know. I am fully confident in my team. They're the best team ever to walk the face of the earth. I'm gonna be able to rescue this machine and any machine that ever gets stuck because of my team. My team is number one and uh, I am uh, captain of that team. All right, I heard the news. I'm basically gonna translate for you guys, kind of lip read myself and help you understand exactly what's going on. It's pretty simple, but at the same time, a good intro to any video is very, very important. If I don't set up what's happening, well that, my friends, is lazy filmmaking. It's something I will have no part of. Right, let's see, what am I saying? Okay, so I'm telling you guys about a recovery that we're about to do. It's a stuck telehandler. The reason why this is important, and this is probably what I was babbling on about here in the clip, was we just got done working on another stuck telehandler, and that recovery's not even done yet. This is probably one of my favorites. This is an absolute shit show. We left that one on the mountain. We still gotta go back and finish that one up. This is a local job site, not too far from the shop. And these guys were out here building and it sunk in the bottomless clay. So after this telehandler sunk in this bottomless pit, it then had the opportunity to sit there and freeze. So it's literally like cemented into the ground. This telehandler weighs like 28, 29,000 pounds. And as we've already showed you in the previous telehandler video, these things are awkward, they're weird. And when they don't function very well, they're a complete nightmare to move around. This telehandler, it's dead. Before we can even move it, we gotta charge it up, jumpstart it, and get it moving so that it can kinda help us with this recovery because moving a completely dead telehandler that's not helping at all is much, much, much more difficult than moving one that's kind of you know participating in the recovery process. Hold on. I think that pretty much covers it. Most of the rest of it was just me repeating myself, kind of rambling. I know a lot of you guys love it when I ramble and repeat myself, so. Nobody got time for that. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and just say, buckle up. This is a fun recovery. It's an important recovery. Like this whole job site is at a standstill until we can get their machine out of the mud. This may look easy, but with how frozen the ground is, this is gonna take an insane amount of pulling power, which fortunately we brought with, you know, the Het Wrecker. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and have that guy with all the weird noises that are coming out of his mouth stop. And we're just gonna uh, roll the video.
that Alan's phone has a camera. Yeah, it's, uh, and I'm taking pictures. I also just figured out I can take videos on your Nokia. Really? Just we're videoing on the Nokia. You're kidding. The question so, is why? Um, Nokia phone here. video. We don't go. Yeah. Stay here with me. I can only assume the quality right. is phenomenal. Right? Could be. But we're videoing. Hi, right, man. Hey, Al. It's me, Diesel Dave. I'm actually in the truck. <laughs> with you right now and Eric. This is going to be a piece of of history right here. They're going to bury this phone somewhere. It's going to be in a time capsule and they're going to pick it up. It's going to be Diesel Dave, Alan, and Eric. And they'll be like, what is this ancient technology you filmed this on? This is incredible. Yeah, something from, uh, I don't know, like maybe the 2000s? Ooh, the That's 2000s. Old. I have no idea if I'm even filming you, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, dude, I was so zoomed in. That way, right? Brush my Smile. teeth, remember? Brush his teeth. What can't the ranger do, bud? Right? Alan was trying to replace it this morning. I want to replace him. How many lights you got hooked up into this ranger, bud? Uh, like six. You got like 40. Okay. You know, as much as I like expensive cameras, there's just something about this $20 Nokia that's just incredible. I mean, look at that shot. Look how much I can zoom in. This piece of garbage could never. All right, cinematic sequence on this Nokia. Here's what that looks like. Shout out to Alan's wizard phone. I got snow in my boot somehow, and I don't, I must have gone through there. My foot is wet. All right. She's dead. Needs to charge for a minute. Getting stucker and stucker by the minute. Hey, that's where we start getting stupid. Never done a recovery or if you've never worked on a job site like this uh, I'll explain to you what happens something gets stuck something goes wrong and you think that's easy so you move quick you move fast you go to get it you know unstuck or whatever it is and if you take like if you make any like small wrong move then you add another link to the chain of stuck so if you don't take your time and think about what you're doing the chain of stuck it's really long. Another issue with this type of thing is typically when things get stuck, the first thing you'll see is this. Now this is not ours, but this is a chain that appears to have been used for the recovery from somebody else who tried to recover this thing. Chains don't work well for pulling out stuck equipment. Don't ever do it because they break and they shoot back and I actually have a bunch of scars on my hand from a chain that uh, snapped and wiped me out. So. Cables, kinetic rope, yanking rope, that kind of stuff is what you need. Try it again. It's all close. All right, give it a second. We got another set of cables. Let's grab those. We can hook to another truck. Mm. 
and we're stuck. Uh, that's stuck, but I knew it was gonna get stuck. I pulled it in as far as it would reach, but we can pull that out real quick. Guys, allow me to introduce you to the newest member of the family. It's a Ram 5500 service truck with a crane on it. You guys know that I've been using my F550 and Bud's truck. Been using all sorts of different vehicles as our sport vehicles, and for a long time I've wanted to build a service truck for myself. This build is gonna be pretty wild. It's still gonna be a service truck, like the severe duty, medium duty Ram 5500s, the F550s. So this build will be covered a little bit on my, our, our channel here, but it's gonna be covered in depth on the Sparks Motors YouTube channel. So for those of you who wanna see like the technical details, we've got liquid spring suspension coming for it. So all hydraulic shocks, get, getting rid of the leaf springs. And we're doing big 42, 43 inch tires, locking axles. It's gonna look a little bit like my Mega Ram Runner. So it's gonna look like an awesome kind of show-ish truck, but at the same time, we're gonna beat the living shit out of it. So this will all be brand new tools and stuff like that. It's not the nicest bed on the market, but the thing about service trucks right now is their price is through the roof. Since we we're gonna modify this thing so much, I didn't wanna go buy the nicest bed out there. So this one will work perfectly for what we're doing. We'll swap out the compressor, uh, put a welder on here, do all sorts of fun stuff. I think you guys are gonna like this build because it's gonna become not just a service vehicle, but also a recovery vehicle. We're gonna put mile marker winches on the front, rear, both sides. This thing is gonna be done up and it's gonna be the main sport vehicle for all of our missions like this. This is kind of its uh, maiden voyage in stock form. It'll probably be the last time you ever see it looking stock like this. I'm excited for this. We're gonna grab another set of jumper cables, get rid of that dumb boost box because it's just not doing any good. Uh, go from two cables straight to the machine, should start. That started. Now we're gonna recover our service truck. We'll be in business. <laughs> what has happened is we pulled the 5500 in to get close enough to the telehandler, jump start the telehandler. Uh, got stuck in doing so, which we expected. It wasn't like we thought we'd get in and out with uh, no issues, but we uh, got stuck. So we gotta re rig up to the 5500 now to get it out of the way to pull the telehandler out. Recovery of the day, about to go down. Is it ourselves? Yeah. Is she coming out, bud? Oh, yeah. Have we ever stopped and dropped one before and walked away? Yeah. No, we haven't. The last one we did. No, we're going back. <laughs> we're going yeah. back. Gonna get it out, Alan? Yeah. It's actually a pretty easy one. We could have actually driven all the way to it. I'm switching over to Nokia mode. Oh, really? Here's Alan. Point of view from his phone. <laughs> I'm zoomed in like on your nose. Is it good? How's the quality? It's so, look at this. 1K? Look how far I can zoom in here. All the way over there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's hands. We need to be lined up, but right now you're at an angle to that. So pull, turn that way, pull forward, and try to aim so you're pointing directly back at it. Push yourself, you know? We're uh, putting some stuff, some material under the uh, telehandler wheels and also kind of use leverage of the machine to help kind of pick it up and out of this hole.
problem is one of our winch cables broke as soon as we got here. It was actually, it got put away wrong and we didn't know it. So we're using the other side winch, which isn't ideal um, for what we're trying to do right now. I think once we're able to get a little bit more leverage on this thing and I can push the winch line down some, it'll pick this whole thing up and out. Let's try to get something underneath there. Uh, the person who was working on this rear winch setup didn't quite finish it. Did a great job, but unfortunately it never got uh, done. So we're dealing with this side, which is the side we normally pull from. The cable got bound up, so we can't use it. So we're using the side that doesn't have the fair lead roller like this thing, which guides the cable smoothly. So the cable is binding up in this pocket right here, just enough to kind of screw things up. So we're gonna run a snatch block on the cable to pull it down and away for anything so it rolls freely. And then between that and then hopefully getting that machine to drive should pull. It's pretty stuck though. I mean, we're on the first roll of a 50,000 pound winch and it's, it's maxed out. We're going to uh, go off the top ropes, you know? Like in WWE, when you, when you can't handle it all on the ground, you got to go from the top ropes. Yeah, can you tell by my form? Dave's rut when he got stuck in the 5500 and it hit frame when it dropped down into that rut. Oh well. I know you're asking yourself what Bud can't do now. Let's get out of here. Rescue mission number three for the day. for the ranger. <laughs> what can't he do? Did he just floor? Bud, you lost your picture of dew. You dropped your picture of dew. <laughs> Thank you guys, appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. This is Alan's, Alan's Nokia. Are you filming the outro on Alan's phone? Yeah. Is that a lens? What is yeah. that? Okay. Uh, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know which one to look at. Am I looking at Nokia? <laughs> we went into this thinking like it's gonna be decently okay, like not too hard. And that's kind of what it was. I didn't want to get my hopes up too high and have it, you know, think it's gonna be a super easy one. The biggest frustration for me on recoveries like this is the fact that our wrecker is constantly just a work in progress and the, the work that needs to be done on it just needs to be done so that we're not here on the job thinking like, oh, we need to do this, we need to do that. So 
that's a nice little wake up call for me that we need to get it in the shop, get some work done on it, get the new service truck in the shop, get some work done on it so that our equipment is ready to go. But I don't know if videos and pictures are gonna do justice with just how frozen and stuck that thing was. I mean, literally every ounce of power of that 50,000 pound winch tugging on it and it was just stalled out. So luckily we had the second winch, pulled it right out, got those guys out of trouble and uh, their job site is shut down for the next several weeks until this place dries up. So uh, one telehandler, done. Now we still have- and two rangers. And two rangers. And a, and a Fitch 500. Yeah, so we, we had four recoveries. Four recoveries. We only got paid for one, though. Again, we still have to go get the other telehandler off the mountain, and that is going to be... Oh, you guys will see. You guys saw the first video. It gives us the opportunity to get creative, maybe build a sled or a trailer or something for it. I don't know. Let's go get some lunch. <laughs> Oh, do I? Seriously? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Any last words for the vlog? Uh, we're out of here.